Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Modelcraft and welcome back to more modelling for beginners. And in today's episode we're going to be controversial. Well, no, we're not really going to be controversial. Some of what I say might be controversial to some people, but um, hopefully not too much. So this aircraft that we're going to model here, or I'm going to model, is of course one of the famous Bottisham 4. Um, I didn't realise honestly initially when I thought I'll just do this one because to me it's more interesting than the one with the blue nose um, and it was only when I looked into it a little bit as I do just google it up have a look see if I can find any pictures of the real thing because I like to sort of operate from that basis uh, and then I realised it's one of these so called blue mustangs so I did a bit more research found a few pictures read a few articles and again as I do came to my own conclusions um, and I suggest honestly that everybody does that uh, model 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 according to your own conclusions and your own opinions I find it odious honestly online the the amount of people on forums and this is not a general quote because there are so many people on internet forums and groups that are so helpful and so brilliant but there are also a lot that are not. And all of these sort of accepted facts, dogmas, if you like, that people tout around, um, none of whom are experts on World War II aviation or logistics or painting or the operation of aircraft or maintenance of aircraft generally, but they talk about, they say all of these things as though they are. And people take it as read because it's said in an authoritative manner. So. All these people that say the Mustangs can't be blue because, well, tell me why they can't be blue. Yeah, there's actually no reason why they couldn't have been blue. There were P-47s that were blue, even Spitfires that were blue, so why could there not have been Mustangs that were blue? Just because you think they should be green. Anyway, that's enough of that, I think. Let's look at what I've come to. So I've done some scribbling on the instructions here because it's truthfully <laughs> quite complicated if I just bring that down a bit it is scribblings you probably can't read it but I've based it on some photographs as I said I'll probably overlay the photographs as I speak but here we go the Bottisham 4 this is uh, an original colour photograph air to air as you can see, as I say, I'll overlay them so that what I'm saying is easier to, to see because I realise that this is a, a, a <laughs> yeah. Um, and to me, it's blindingly obvious that three out of those four Mustangs are not the same as the other. So E2S, the second aircraft away from the camera, is clearly not the same colour as the other three aircraft are. All of the usual arguments about photographic evidence can really be dismissed because all four of these aircraft are sharing the same piece of sky at the same time of day, lit by the same sun, photographed by the same camera and th the negative has been processed by the same person and incidentally before anybody says it this photo that I've just shown you is reproduced from the actual original negative it's not been messed with and in with all of those conditions being so it's still blindingly obvious to me that three of those aircraft are in fact blue or at least partially blue the area specifically above the national marking on the fuselage is, is clearly blue whereas the area if you look on the fin with the camouflage paint applied around the fin is really quite obviously the same on the three aircraft that, that show that that uh, painting so to me it doesn't seem to be a big le leap to realize that these aircraft were blue upon closer inspection it's also easy to see that the blue was applied after the green because it's it's been painted partially over the stripes you can see that on the lead aircraft there is a close-up and again I'll, I'll overlay these photos there's a crop of that image where it's easy to see it and even more easy 
to see is this actually beautiful black and white close-up it's really it's quite Christmas sharp and you can zoom in on it pretty hard and you can really see on there where the apparently blue paint is over painted onto the D-Day stripes and indeed there seems to be some green left there's also this portion of the wing route that a lot of people say is black uh, and beyond that I don't know so the assumption could be that the overwing stripes were painted over in blue but I don't think they were my analysis and I'm not a black and white photo anal an analyzer but this tone here where it's blue pretty much does match the little pit around the gun ports and indeed that little triangle there for some reason <laughs> uh, next to the nose art um, I'm also undecided but the tail planes where the black recognition stripe was already on the tail planes arguably when you look at this picture it looks like it may have been over painted <clears throat> and it does look as though if it was it could have been done in the blue now I'm not going to sit here and espouse opinions on why the Americans might have decided to use blue paint that's up to them on top of that there are some anonymous on on top of that there appear to be some anomalies I can't say anomalies today with the D-Day stripes as well uh, again the fuselage stripes on the close-up this area here has got no paint there's no white paint just there and it looks to me very much like the white of this band here has either been scrubbed off or is incredibly weathered such that it nearly matches the surrounding natural metal finish the same is true of the underwing stripes in that the cent central white stripe on both wings appears again to either have been scrubbed off or never applied obviously you can't say which uh, it's not really easy to figure it out from this photo but I did find looking through a, a book that I, I own is a lovely picture of the actual aircraft banking away from the camera and in this picture you very easily can see that that middle white stripe is not in fact white and you can also see what appears to be some kind of repair potentially or slight patch or rubbish stripe on the underside of the tail planes as well in white so all of this has led me to the decisions of which I have noted on the instructions and I'll show you, go through that quickly now. The main green on the aircraft appears quite dark in the photograph so I've decided to use Tamiya's XF58 olive green, a quite dark but still very much olive drab colour. That will be used on the tail area, this area here and the wings then I'm going to use a different tone of olive drab to represent the overpainted upper wing stripes and for that I'm going to use Tamiya's LP28 it's still olive drab it's just a different tone slightly lighter and a slightly different tone generally so it will be obvious that it's deliberately a different colour basically I'm still not quite decided whether I'm going to leave these overwing ID stripes black or, or overpaint them in blue. I think I'm leaning towards black honestly at the moment but that's that's it for there. The possible black wing route in the close-up it's really easy to see that this black and white one is hand painted in fact most of this camo looks to have been applied by a brush or a roller rather than sprayed. Um, it does look very dark uh, it does appear to match the tone of the cereals which are black but I don't particularly want black wing roots so I'm going to lead, stick with the dark olive drab colour here the blue for the upper fuselage the gun panels and this little square this little triangle area here I've mixed my own and it's going to be this uh, this was mixed to do a Mirage F1 and it was mixed from XF18, XF19 and XF8 
So I greyed off some medium blue and then I added some flat blue just to get the tone where I wanted it. To that then I've added a bit more XF8, some X23 which is clear blue uh, and some X3 which is a darker blue. If you're wondering why I would add clear blue it's because you can shift the tone without changing the tone if you use clear colours as long as they're the right sort of clear colours because they don't have other other colours influencing how they mix with what you're doing. And that has ended up being a nice this is definitely blue. It's reminiscent of PRU blue, a little bit darker. Closest colour out of the box or the jar if you like is probably like the RF um, blue grey sort of colour that you can get. There is some talk of the main green being RAF dark green, but I don't really see any justification for that being the case. It doesn't really matter to me. They're not RAF dark green realistically isn't that different to olive drab actually. Okay, where was I? So I got to the black wing root, not gonna do that. It's also an another point to note here is that on the left side at least the paint ends at this panel here and doesn't continue around the the wing root like it does on the others. So the choice of the right hand side matching that or matching the convention would be yours. Uh, we've got the missing white stripe here, very dirty slash missing white stripe here. This one is also very dirty. That area is going to be green. Again there's some chat about whether this small patch here is, is blue. I think it's more likely to be paint wearing off the leading edge than, than being overpainted in blue, so I'm going to go with wear. Possible white stripe or repair. Initially I had that on the right hand tail plane underside because it's visible in the main photo of the four, but when I found the photograph of the aircraft peeling away it's also visible on the left hand tail plane as are the black stripes. So I'll probably put something in there. Uh, gun panels in blue again, middle stripe missing and there we have it, that's our scheme. Pause for effect. Now what I would encourage everybody to do if they're going to paint this aircraft is paint it how you like. It's your model. Nobody can prove or disprove with any great amount of confidence exactly how this thing should appear. So paint it the way you want to paint it. If you want to paint it blue, paint it blue. It's your model, you're making it for your fun, no one else's. If you're somebody that builds for competitions and, and, and needs other people to accept your work, then fair enough, but I don't, so this is how I'm going to do it. And that's enough about that, I think. And this has been here long enough for you to see my notes. So I'll pull that out of the way and, um, and let's get on with it, shall we? Now I've got half of this painted with the first green and I'm going to admit I changed my mind on the green. This is not XF58, this is XF27, black green as you can see. Surely that's too dark? Well, probably. <laughs> um, but it really does look like the one in the picture so I'm happy, I actually think it looks pretty cool. So how did I do this? I've copied this carefully, this side from the, the photograph, as best I can, using the sensory putty uh, and obviously the Panzer putty and the AK equivalents will do this as well. And to show you how I've gone about doing that is this side before I, before I add paint uh, and I don't have a photo of this side so I've gone with a more sort of standard, that bubbly thing they did. Um, just make little worms, add it on and you can tease it into position with a cocktail stick, you can kind of massage the direction it all takes. It's difficult to have a lot of finesse truthfully uh, but it leaves a more friendly edge than hard masking. It's a sort of very very slightly soft edge. It's clear that some of this looks sprayed so it's a very very slightly soft edge but not really soft soft but not hard which is ideal for something like this so that's why I'm using it and that's how I've gone about it. 
The reason I've done the halves separately is literally just to save a little bit of brain ache with masking and also with this stuff it it's that weird sort of self-settling mass thing that it's got going on you can't leave it in position on the model for very long before it starts to soften and do what it wants which you can see it is starting to do on this already so you need to sort of put it on get your paint on carry on with something else so that's why I've basically done that side then I've done this wing and so on and so forth um, I've only painted into the wing root so far I will paint this pattern on the side separately and I may choose to do it a very slightly different colour again when it comes to it I've also wrapped the paint around on the wingtip slightly that was just done freehand uh, as the photo shows that well it looks like it shows that there is a little bit of a wraparound effect going on at the wingtip so that that's how I've gone about that and this as I say XF27 it's just standard ordinary Tamiya acrylic it's aggressively matte as you can see uh, it's thinned with Mr Colour Thinner as usual here we are then with both wings done and the whole tail it's the pattern I went with on this side it's all just made up I don't have any pictures um, there it is there and then I pretty much hit a brick wall with what to do next how how to go about or what should I do next what's the next stage of this paint job it's it's not as simple as it seems here's the paint job uh, and using the photographs of the real thing which you saw earlier in the video there are some really specific patterns here around the two the way that the overpaint interacts with the, the cereals and indeed the stripes and the star and bar is quite specific so I was really just wondering which best to do next I think the best thing to do next is the invasion stripes but even so how how do I go about making sure everything interacts the way it's supposed to basically is what I'm getting at uh, so I've come up with this what we've got here is a piece of Artul clear vinyl mask this is uh, available it's this stuff you can cut your own masks with it as you can see I have done here I've cut a piece off big enough for the task taken it from its clear backing and stuck it to a piece of one of the plastic bags out of the kit hard to tell from there I know but it is stuck down to a piece of clear plastic sheet so that I can peel it off uh, without any damage and then use it and the plan is use the fine pen and I've already done it on the E2 here I've basically traced I don't know how obvious it is but hopefully you can see there's a, a, a sort of a black outline on that one I need one each of this code the national marking and the C that's all I need I've used this as a, as a tracing device essentially and I will once I've drawn around each of those of these things cut them out with a scalpel and then I can apply all and then I can apply all three to the model using the artwork and the photograph to place them exactly where I want them and I can then paint all the other colours and I can line up all the demarcations exactly where they need to be because I know exactly where the codes and markings are going to be later they don't need to be exactly exactly right but they do need to be very close to it which is why I came up with doing it this way in the end this way I can trace off exactly what I've got here on the decal sheet without damaging the decal sheet uh, and then I can also create these masks so that I can then map everything out of course if it was preferred you could do something really old school like maybe photocopy the decal sheet and use that as a pattern or, or whatever um, but this way I'm not, I'm not damaging anything and I can move forward sort of safe in the knowledge effectively that everything's going to sit where I want so that when it does come later to putting decals on they're going to fit within the rest of the scheme properly uh, and it will all look like it's meant to be there um, 
if anybody's going to start on me about this not really being for beginners at this point I, I I think my comeback to that will be that there are an awful lot of modelers out there that aren't beginners that would struggle with figuring this out um, and probably come up with all kinds of different ways around it I even considered fitting the decals and then masking around them but I decided that this was the safest way forward uh, and that's how I'm going to proceed so if anybody there is wondering why on earth I'm going into these kind of length and, and this sort of detail on what is supposedly a beginner's build we've already discussed that to an extent it's not really purely aimed at beginners but more at people who want to build on early experience and move forward in the hobby and actually doing things like this is something that is seen as a very as quite I think overall is seen as quite a, a, an advanced sort of technique and an advanced way to do things and I want to show you that actually it's it's really not it's quite it's quite easy to do so anyway I'll be back in a mo when I've cut all of these out and I'll put them on the model and here we go this is what we get we take that plastic backed piece of sticky back film back off the deco sheet you can clearly see I've used um, one of the Edward cards as a backing so I can clearly see my scribblings um, and then simply just carefully cut them out with the scalpel and it will leave you with a plastic backed mask which when you're ready to fix it to the model which we'll do in a minute you can just fiddle with it for you know eight minutes or so off camera preferably and um, eventually find a way in <laughs> to, to, to get this plastic sheet off the back of the mask whereupon you'll be able to stick it to the model using the decal placement plan and using the photographs to get it exactly where you want it. Note also that I have put a tiny T on the national marking there. Um, they should be symmetrical but just in case they're not, because I've traced it from the decal, they are, the, the hope is that the decal will fit back over this later. So in an ideal world, truthfully, aim to cut sort of to the inside of the black line, as you can see I have with this, so that this is just ever so slightly smaller than the decal, which will give a little bit more likelihood of the decal finishing and covering exactly what we want it to cover later. Now I have my first set of masks in the place here. I've been using the photograph along with the decal or the colour and marking sheet. Now you can see there's a piece of tape on these letters. You can also see if you look carefully that they don't really the spacing looks a bit off from the model to the real thing. Don't worry too much about that. I think that's because the decals have got a silver outline around them to account for this sort of where it's neatly painted around. It's left a margin. Uh, the decals have a silver surround on them, so they're a bit wider in stature than what you can see the serials there are. Uh, I think that's why the spacing looks off. But the reason there's a piece of tape on there is that When you cut these out, uh, the reason we're using these is so that we can mask for colours around these markings and then slot the decals in afterwards. So logically then, the mask needs to match the spacing of the decal. If you really wanted to, you could obviously trim the back and film away from the decal and fit the letters separately. But I think they're fine as they are. So in order to keep that spacing for these two separate cutout letters correct, or matching the decal sheet anyway. I just put a piece of tape over the top. I've applied them as a one in one go, as the same as you would a decal. And now I can peel this piece of tape back off the top, and it will leave my vinyl masks in place if I'm careful. And I did detack the vinyl masks as well. Just carefully, carefully peel it away. There we go. We've got it. From all the different directions to enable the tape to come off. There we go. And just pat these back down into place with the finger. 
and then just double triple check the alignment make sure you're happy because you can see through these it's quite easy to see where the panel lines are and kind of figure out if things are straight or straight enough for government work anyway and now I can mask the areas I want to spray without worrying that the decals will not lay to match where they want to be and you join me part way through installation of the fuselage d-day stripes um, I have already I've masked this out according just done it by eye and I haven't really bothered to worry about whether it's completely perpendicular or straight or lines up with anything really <laughs> I've just um, roughly in place according to the diagram double checking it with the photos the diagram is pretty good actually it's, it's pretty spot on uh, as you can see there's a chunk there for my bald patch that I want and as um, you can probably also see I really really don't have full coverage on this white I've got in there this is XF2 this is my Tamiya XF2 you can tell that it's not completely flat and super hyper aggressively matte like Tamiya mattes normally are and that's because it's got some gloss in it some X2 and probably some other stuff as well and you can also see I really don't have full coverage that's deliberate I also haven't masked it very much because I've sprayed it very delicately I haven't needed to do also don't forget I haven't mentioned this yet but don't forget to mask the canopy frame off because we don't want any of this on the canopy frame it stays silver so I've sprayed all the way up pretty much to the national marking because the overpaint comes down beyond that so it will overlap and now I'm going to mask for putting the black stripes on so I'm going to cover this white back up once it's properly dry I'll give it a, it's dry but I'm going to give it a bit longer uh, and then put the black in and I'm going to be similarly light handed with the black as well I, I just want just enough paint to give me a black stripe I don't want edges and build up and stuff because you'll see all of that when you put the overpaint on if you're not careful so that's how I've gone about that I've done it the normal way I do with masking I've got a strip of tape down here where you can't see and I've used the steel rule, steel rule to cut some narrow lines which I use to map out the actual demarcation and then I've just backfilled with a little bit of 10 mil tape and as an aside the 10 mil tape in my snail right now you can probably tell by the colour isn't Tamiya tape this is actually Mr Hobby 10 mil tape I got this at a show a little while back from Froome Model Center. Now Froome Model Center, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but they're a really good place to look for Mr. Hobby and Guns tools and accessories. Uh, they've really got quite a few of them. This is a similar price to Tammy Day, but I don't think it's necessarily any cheaper. Uh, but I, I just picked it up out of interest. As you can probably see, doesn't fit the Tamiya tape style perfectly. The Tamiya rolls have a the right size cardboard center. So that does mean when you're trying to pull it quite often you have to pull it a bit before anything happens because it moves the whole roll. But there, that's a this is it's basically the same stuff, slightly different colour. It's a bit paler, maybe a tiny bit thinner. It's quite a bit stickier as well. So there you go, just a bonus extra micro review there of Mr. Masking Tape 10mm. D-Day stripes are on. I tried really hard to make them wonky and uneven and they've still come out reasonably good. <laughs> That's the way it goes. This one is lent back a little bit. It's supposed to be. I spotted on one of the photos that it looked as though it was. And I've also done the underside of the towel plane, the black ID bands there as well. Obviously I'll be doing these stripes later on but for now what I want to do is get the colours in along the spine you can see I've already started doing a little masking here I'll just show you my photo quickly obviously I've only got the left side the right hand side will be sort of similar but guessed now this section here up to just after the filler cap and sort of along here will be green 
so I'm now just masking that out I'm not going to mask this end because I'll mask that when I put the blue on in a, in a few minutes but so I put tape down here it looks to me like the ground crew when they've over painted the upper half of the stripes or filled it in or whatever they've done they've kind of naturally followed this panel line along which is fair enough but that makes it easier for us when it comes to replicating it so I've used the thin strips of tape just to mark out where we're going here and then I'm going to use the therapy putty Ugh. the hardest thing about this is getting it out of its tub once it comes out it's it's great you just just small pieces of it really make them into small bits that are the pieces that are small enough to kind of conform and do what I want them to do I don't want too much going on with them really there is a live event going on across the way so if you can hear a bit of music in the background that's what that is unfortunately at this time of year if I waited for proper quiet outside I'd never get any filming done at all so okay Just initially, I've just plonked that on there, just popped it down and got, and got it to stick. And then I'm just really going to move it around with my cocktail stick until I get it to look what I need to, or how, till I get it to look how I want it to look, basically. So I'm looking for a sort of a a curve just coming down onto the middle of the top of the two basically and again that has clearly been brush painted I think on, on the real aircraft may you be rollered but I lost the skill to brush paint a model a lot of years ago There we go, so that's the top part. I shall do the same. I've already taped off right at the bottom, and then in the crook of the two here, we want the same again. Kind of a reverse curve. You see, just teasing it into position with the cocktail stick. Be careful doing this that you make sure the bottom edge is smooth because otherwise you'll you'll get some quite raggedy masking without realizing it there we go that's what I needed that's what I've done now I'll sort of fill in a bit more masking around here and just put a little bit of green just down there oh uh, it's blue now <laughs> yeah I wanted it to look wrong so far it kind of does um, just more of the same masking little bits of tape where they needed to be little bits of tape uh, and the, the therapy putty elsewhere and I have got quite hard sharp edges which is obviously completely deliberate this is what I've done on the other side I'm going to leave the E2 masks in situ for now because I, I want them there for when I put the shape along the wing route but I can now remove the C's and the National Marking Mask always with the masks the way I remove it is I really really gently use the tip the side of the tip of the tweezer and effectively just niggle away at the edge until it grabs hold of it enough for me to take the mask out of, out of the way there we go and that is what I was aiming for I've got a window there I know it looks really odd at the minute doesn't it but a window here that I can put my decals into 
when I get there. Now, I did change my mind. I am going to put blue on top of the wings and on top of the tail planes because as I've been going along and looking closely at my photos, I think it looks reasonable. Plus, I can't see any logical explanation for overpainting an area here in blue, but then overpainting areas here in green. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, it will be lots and lots more of exactly what I've been showing you, more tape, masking, spraying, demasking, lots and lots of times uh, to get all those different sort of areas in place and I will come back to you when I've done all of those things. I know I said I'd be back when I was done but I ha had a sort of sudden realisation about something that could be really helpful to people that I hadn't mentioned or even really noticed to be honest because um, decals. The kit includes a pretty much complete suite of decal D-Day stripes here and I I had failed to even consider them as an option because to me they aren't. I don't I don't do decal D-Day stripes. Um, they're not typically all that difficult to paint on uh, and, and honestly and I'm not mucking about honestly it's probably easier in most cases to paint them on than to try and get decals to fit but what you can use these for is marking out where to put your D-Day stripes so the decal designer here has been has very graciously given us all these measurements there's an overall measurement of the full width of the set of stripes and there's measurements of each stripe etc etc um, but rather than mucking about trying to figure that out, why not actually do what I've just done here? Cut the decal out off the sheet that you're not going to use. I mean, use it if you want to, obviously. And you can just, it's as easy as anything to line this up because the aperture for the undercarriage bay is there and there's some cutouts for the gun mounds. Line it up and use it to mark where the stripes need to be. So I've got some tape down here, you can't see it. It's a bit of 6mm and I've cut it down. There's not a big curve or anything to follow, but I cut it down because if you lay a full width piece of tape straight across the wing, you're not going to get a straight line. It will curve slightly because of the curvature of the wing. So it's better to use a slightly narrower piece that you can guide to where you want it. So I'm using the decal, I'm lining it up with all the details and I shall use that to set the outer boundary of my set of stripes. And obviously I'm not making any effort here to replicate any sort of untidiness. I'm, I'm just not bothered. So the back's quite good there so I'll just bring that up. As usual I'm too far away from the camera, my, my apologies. There we go. That has set the outer edge of where my set of stripes are going to go. Now, if you're really bothered, you can use something like a divider and set set the width to match say this panel line and just sort of double check and I could see with my eye to be honest but I just check checking with that shows me that this is slightly askew in terms of being in line with that panel line but I'm not worried because these were painted on by ground crews staring upside down at a wing if anybody's ever had to try and paint anything in that manner you can probably feed back that it's not that easy um, so there, you can use these, as I say, to set, to mark out where you want your stripes to go. Obviously the same with the inner set. Just line it up on the model. Use your piece of tape and you go. Right, as promised, I'm back. I've done it all. I've got all the colours on. Almost. But I've got all the colours on that I need to have on for the next couple of processes so I've used about 14 pounds worth of masking tape I think I should have 
kept it all in one ball instead instead of chucking it off to each process i probably would have had about a tennis ball's worth of tape i have used a lot it's been i you know what i enjoy masking it's i don't find it tedious but there's been a lot of it and it complicated by all the different areas that have required the masking which sort of makes it it's made it's made it necessary for me to break it up into pieces as you've seen as i've gone along i've kind of done one side then the other i've even done that with the wing roots i uh, did one side and then the other but we're there now and this is what this is what i've ended up with let me put these flaps on and i'll explain myself okay so we've got silver we started off with the aluminium bare metal finish look for the fuselage and then the aluminium aluminium for the wing which only remains really on these outboard panels because this area was the natural metal style finish also then we did some green all masked with the therapy putty you can of course use panzer putty if you have it or indeed blue tack if you prefer to, to do that then i cut the mask by tracing from the decal sheet so that i can get all the sort of demarcations where i want them in relation to the lettering and not have to play and, and do guessing so that's that green at the front blue in the middle I did the blue on the wings front and rear and then I added in the wing roots down here I've used the same color as the wing I don't believe it was black there's been there's some talk on the online about this area being black I can see why I'll show you that in a minute but I've decided to stick with the green this side I've brought forward of the leading edge because it's clear from the photo that this panel has been changed which is why you've got that sharp finish there I've got the black anti-glare panel and I've done this as per the photo rather than as per the kit uh, marking artwork and these vent panels here I've done black but I think in retrospect it would be logical and plausible for them actually to be green so that's all of that and underneath I've added some badly sprayed white areas on the tail plane tips and then the gun panels so I think you probably all noticed these bright red bits straight away and thought, what on earth are you doing woman well they're aluminium again underneath and I've gone for red on the top and I've used a brush to touch up to make it like someone's painted it with a brush now let me show you why I have done this and I know obviously that I started out saying what colours I was going to do and I've completely changed my mind as I've gone along but that's because I've been closely studying the photos and thinking out loud as I went along so here's my black and white I'll try and get that so the lights aren't on it and we'll zoom all right we won't zoom we'll go out zoom up a bit so pointer this swing week being black using a black and white photo is obviously uh, never going to be precise but it appears to match the tone of the lettering fairly well but I don't I don't really roll with that I don't really see anything going on demark wise here to suggest that this color is different than this color you can clearly see that the outboard wing panel is a different tone to the area that's over painted on the invasion stripes and that that area there tonally and we're obviously guessing here kind of matches this area here which we've decided is blue because of the color photo then you've got a green piece here and on the smaller one you can see there's a green section at the back as well here's this windscreen demarcation the marking diagram would have you paint the whole windscreen frame you can see there that that is not the case and also that this panel here has either been replaced or cleaned up because it isn't black and then you've got this area here around the guns and you can again you can clearly see there's an area of a different color at first glance you could argue that it kind of matches this blue again but since we've decided that this is blue and this is blue this is clearly different so it can't be the same as the blue in theory and i spent a long time thinking about it because my underside photo was inconclusive as well um and then i had a brainwave so if i go to the color photograph here 
is the colour picture and in this picture you can see the green up here ending you can see our blue area you can see that that wingtip is not blue so the, blue, the wings themselves aren't blue you can see the white under the tower plane there and you can see something going on here but does that or does that not look like it could just possibly might be a glint of red mm, I know you're all frowning now aren't you go back to our blown up one black and white again it's an imperfect process but just think this and this bear in mind this is hand painted so it's not really a, a, a nice solid colour unlike the deco sheet but I don't think it's too far removed and looking at the deco sheet it, it, it's red basically so I've put two and two together came up with 6.3 and I've painted my gun panels red and I think it looks kind of nice. Why on earth would it have red gun panels you say? Well it's fairly obvious actually in this photo here that this aircraft has yellow ones and even that they look like there might be a bit of red in there as well so I don't think it's unreasonable to think that the gun panels were painted for some reason in colour. You can also see that that yellow appears to continue underneath on this one if I go back to the underside photograph I think it's reasonable to suggest that this area here isn't yellow or red and it looks if anything to be silverish so there we go that's why I've painted everything the colour I have uh, it's been a mammoth task masking it all like I say because I've had to break it up into areas because you know painting all of the blue in one go surely would be quicker for the painting but would have been an e even more of a nightmare to mask it all off so I, I kind of broke the whole thing up into chunks and it makes the whole masking task less odious for me anyway so there we go and you've got invasion stripes underneath I did decide in the end that this centre one is probably it would have been painted white I could see areas of white I think it's just absolutely filthy frankly um, so that will be dealt with later with weathering same back here and it's also obvious I think that I haven't done anything at all with regard to pre-shading middle shading post shading or any sort of shading whatsoever this has all just been painted in the block colours and that again is entirely deliberate because whatever I decide to do with or weathering of these colours I'll do later. So the next part is going to be a good sound coat of our X22 for the whole model. I'm going to spray the whole thing with a decent coat, probably two coats of this X22 highly thinned about 60 to 70 percent thinners paint the whole thing and then it will need to be left for a few days for everything to reharden back up and that will be in preparation for the deckling which is going to happen in the next episode so like my colour choices or like them <laughs> they're mine it's my model and I think it looks kind of cool I would encourage you all to do your research and decide for yourselves what you do or don't want to do with regard to these colours and, and please feed it back to me I'm interested um, but I think honestly that I to my eyes for what I want to do I don't think it looks a million miles off what I can see in this colour photo really dark green and a deep vivid purplish blue I like it okay that's it for this one I will see you all again in the next one so thank you very very much for watching thanks as always for all the lovely comments and support that you're sending and keep it up all of you chaps that are following there are quite a few following along this time so keep up your good work as well and i'll see you all in the next video so with all of that said i think it only remains for me to say look after yourselves look after each other and genesis out <laughs>